from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, bringing you data-driven insights from the Cube and ETR. This is Breaking Analysis with Dave Vellante. George Kurtz is pumped up, and why not? CrowdStrike's business appears to be on track and entering a new phase of growth despite the difficult macro and elongated sales cycles. The company's products are considered best in class, its business is growing steadily, and an improved profitability and cash flow outlook have investors excited, albeit still cautious given the environment and a quite rich 13X revenue multiple. Gen AI could be the next catalyst for the company in a race to close the SecOps staffing gap with a natural language based machine assistant known as Charlotte AI. Hello and welcome to this week's Wikibon Cube Insights powered by ETR. In this breaking analysis, we update our scenario on security leader CrowdStrike. We'll review the company's recent progress, share survey data that shows where it is strong and where there may be some icebergs ahead. And we'll preview Falcon 2023, which takes place next week in Las Vegas. This year has seen ups and downs for CrowdStrike and the cyber industry in general. Here's a year to date chart of some of the cyber related data points showing the performance of Palo Alto Networks, CrowdStrike, Zscaler, the NASDAQ and the bug cybersecurity ETF. As you can see, the sector is not immune to tech headwinds. Take a look at May when everything sort of dropped. And now you look at the bug ETF is performing below the NASDAQ, but it's a tale of two cities. There are definitely some bright spots with the likes of Palo, CrowdStrike and Zscaler, which are outperforming the NASDAQ this year by a decent margin. Those three are playing the consolidation game quite effectively, while many others are donating share. Now, generally these platforms, the, these, these are platform plays of which CrowdStrike is one of the more prominent and these plays are winning and the leaders are expanding their total available markets with new modules and participating at the periphery of adjacencies in CrowdStrike's uh, situation, such as observability. Now, as we hear at every conference this year, Gen AI will be a hot topic at Falcon, with the company expected to announce pricing for its Charlotte AI Intelligent SOC Assistant. One of the first examples of AI, Gen AI specifically, monetization at Black Hat last August, this past August, CrowdStrike showed a demo of Charlotte, one of the few, um, <laughs> if not one of the only large companies, but one of the few that were actually demonstrating Gen AI for security. So we're eager to see that at the upcoming conference. Let's talk about the recent performance of CrowdStrike specifically. I consulted with SiliconANGLE's lead cybersecurity journalist, David Strom, who's been in this business for quite some time to get his take on CrowdStrike. He's a real skeptic, but he is well is positive on the company, especially as the Falcon platform, Falcon is what CrowdStrike calls its, its cybersecurity platform, has succeeded at both integrating many dozens of modules and understanding how these modules map to a customer's skill sets, and moreover, how the data collected by Falcon's lightweight agent is shared across these teams. Collect once, use many, as George Kirk Kurtz likes to say. CrowdStrike was early into cloud-based security, perhaps a bit late on protecting containers, but it's catching up fast with a dynamic analysis tool for containers. CrowdStrike combines both an agent and agent-less approach and is generally considered leading edge. Take for example, a hot emerging security company, Wiz, which CEO George Kurtz called out on the last earnings call. It's generally viewed as having, Wiz that is, a, a better dashboard and user experience but it's agent-less architecture doesn't have the data richness of CrowdStrike. So this is just one example of the many trade-offs that users face in evaluating the complex mosaic of cybersecurity platforms. But generally CrowdStrike is seen as being capable of handling many, many different security situations. Here's a snapshot of CrowdStrike's financial performance. It's ARR is up $790 million since last year at this time. That's a 37% year on year growth. Note the note in the subscription uh, customers with five plus modules, a growth there 63% versus 59% last year. Big jump in free cash flow margin up from single digits a year ago. 
And then rule of 63, i.e. free cash flow margin plus revenue growth, it's quite impressive. And then year on year subscription revenue growth, 36% not shown versus 60% last year. The street, given this stellar performance and relatively easy compare, wanted more aggressive uh, guidance, but for reasons that we'll cite in a moment, we think caution is prudent. Now at a recent Goldman Sachs conference, or maybe it was the earnings call, I can't really remember, George Kurtz invoked Angie Jassy's famous line, there is no compression algorithm for experience, and here's the CrowdStrike version of that statement and the strong case for AI-based security from the beginning. Now, you may say it's easy to create a slide like this after the AI shot heard around the world last November from OpenAI and ChatGPT, but CrowdStrike has been deep in AI for a decade plus. And the call out on the upper right of Charlotte AI is, 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 is new and we believe we are entering a new era where technology is going to begin to attack the number one problem faced by SecOps teams, and that's the lack of deep talent. Estimates indicate there are 3,000 unfilled security jobs today, and the vision is AI can begin to close that gap quite effectively. All right, let's get into some of the ETR data. Uh, Alex, if you bring up the next slide. What we want to look at here is CrowdStrike's spending performance and the breakdown of ETR's net score methodology. It's a proprietary methodology. Here we're showing of the 422 CrowdStrike customers in the survey of 1700 plus, we show, let's focus on the July bar, July, 2023. The, the October survey is in the field, so we have to block it out. We have early results. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. The lime green is new customers. And you can see it's been decelerating you know, pretty steadily, you know, but not dramatically, but pretty steadily over the last several quarters. That's at 12%. The forest green is spending is increasing by 6% or more. That's a healthy 41%, but down from earlier highs. You can see the big uptick in flat spending. That causes the compression in net score, which is that blue line at 48%. Uh, and I'll explain the math in a moment. And then the, the pink is spending down 6% or worse, and the red is defections or churn. You subtract the reds from the greens and you get net score, which again is that blue line, which is on a slight downward trajectory, uh, falling in at 48%. But notice that red dotted line at 40%, that indicates a highly elevated spending momentum, and CrowdStrike is well above that. The yellow line, is presence or pervasiveness inside the data set. And it's basically calculated by taking that N of 422, dividing it by the total N in the survey and tracking that in a time series. And you can see CrowdStrike, relatively speaking to other companies in the data set is in, in other sectors has been growing quite nicely. The caution is, I took a glimpse at the survey that's in the field now, there definitely is some some caution around SMB momentum, it appears to be decelerating, and momentum overall appears to be decelerating, uh, decelerating as well, which is cause for concern. Okay, however, <clears throat> what I want to do now is take a look at the all important Global 2000, and I want to come back and talk about SMB, and particularly a deal that CrowdStrike <clears throat> has struck with Dell, which obviously has a very strong SMB performance, but Alex, bring up the next chart, thank you. This is CrowdStrike's spending performance in the global 2000. Now the N in, in the ETR data set for CrowdStrike is 109. Look what happens. Actually, Alex, go back to the previous slide. We can see that 48% uh, of, of net score, if you don't mind going back one. Yeah, you see 48% on the previous slide. Now, Alex, go forward one and look at the big jump when you go into the global 2000. That jumps up to 61%. Now, again, the end is smaller because there are fewer Global 2000 customers, but a very steady increase uh, in the Global 2000 performance. So that's quite notable. And you can see the even steeper rise in the shape of the yellow curve. Again, that's essentially the, the presence or pervasion inside the data set. Now, what we like to do, as you know, in 
uh, breaking analysis is use the ETR data to compare uh, companies in, in particular sectors to peers. And we're going we're gonna to show you a few kind of interesting cuts. So Alex, bring up the next slide. This is CrowdStrike's peer performance in, within the global 2000. So we're talking about an N of 430 global 2000. So it's pretty good. Four, the ETR captures 430 approximately, 430 out of the, out of the, out of the 2000 that are out there worldwide, and 109 CrowdStrike instances. And this is the information security sector. On the vertical axis is net score or spending momentum, which we, we explained earlier. On the horizontal axis is, is, is that N in the data set and the overlap with all these companies. N determines the N by net score determines the plot of the dot. Now, a couple of things to note here. First of all, that squiggly line is CrowdStrike's performance over the last several quarters. And notice its net score on the vertical axis has held pretty steady. But as we saw in that steep yellow line in the previous chart, that, that pretty steep uptick, it's gaining share and its consolidation play is working. So <laughs> George Kurtz says others are donating share, but it's clearly uh, 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 working for, for CrowdStrike. You'd, you'd, you'd likely see something similar for Palo Alto Networks and Zscaler. You know, we'll talk about those in, in, other, uh, in more detail in other breaking analyses. The other call out here is George Kurtz on the earnings call specifically called out Microsoft, because Microsoft is a big competitor of CrowdStrike. They're not, they're not even frenemies, they're kind of enemies for the most part. But there's a lot of overlap in the customer base, which I'll talk about. He also called out Wiz. I mentioned Wiz earlier with the David Strom commentary, and we've, we've highlighted them. Wiz, very hot company at RSA. They were talk of the town. People were, practitioners were lining up to get into the Wiz party. Um, we, we were there, we were there across the street from the Inside Capital Party. So there was a lot of action there that we could observe. And he also called out Sentinel One, uh, a company that is rumored to be going private and, um, and, and Kurtz you know, kind of threw some FUD into the mix about how, hey, customers have seen this movie before and they're obviously cautious about companies going private or getting acquired. We heard that a couple of years ago with some practitioners around Carbon Black when VMware made that acquisition. Uh, we're hearing it again with the Broadcom acquisition of VMware. So, you know, practitioners, they don't like uncertainty. They've got enough uncertainty, especially SecOps pros. But at any rate, you can see here that that red dotted line is the 40% line and a number of companies are over that line. And again, remember this is the global 2000, but CrowdStrike really stands out because it's above that 40% line and it's quite prominent in terms of its market presence in the global 2000 as is Zscaler, as is Okta, uh, which has not performed as well from a, a stock market standpoint, uh, given its difficulty integrating Auth0 but nonetheless, you can see it there. And you can see the others, very, very crowded uh, market, obviously. And of course, Microsoft, you've, you've got to be impressed with Microsoft in that you know, it's got a huge presence in so many different markets. But generally speaking, you know, it participates as a, as a, as a uh, competitor in endpoint security with, with, with CrowdStrike, but it's not a horizontal platform. Uh, it doesn't, George Kurt again makes the point, it, Microsoft doesn't wake up every day thinking about security, only a portion of Microsoft does that. That said, Microsoft has a very large security business. It claims many tens of billions of dollars, so it could be the largest security firm on the planet, you know, depending on how you count that. All right, now, what I want to do is take a look at the overlap on the next slide of 422 CrowdStrike accounts. And what we're showing here is the same vertical axis that, that net score and the presence in the data set on the horizontal axis. And because Microsoft is such a big competitor to CrowdStrike, and because George Kurtz, again, commented, I don't know if it was in the earnings call or one of the other conferences, that there was a big overlap between CrowdStrike uh, customers and, and Microsoft or Microsoft customers and CrowdStrike accounts, what we're showing here is CrowdStrike accounts, 422 counts, and the overlap with some of its competitors and some of its partners. So notice, 
Microsoft, 79%, according in the ETR data set, 79% of those 422 CrowdStrike accounts are running Microsoft. Not surprising that Microsoft has such a huge presence inside of, of CrowdStrike accounts, but it's meaningful and significant. Zscaler, Okta uh, are partners. They're, they're, they're partnering with Palo Alto, uh, sorry, with, uh, with CrowdStrike. They are sponsors of the Falcon Conference, Palo Alto Networks, you know, is, is a little bit broader. They've done acquisitions in a lot of areas. They're a larger company and they've got a bigger presence. They don't have the, the spending velocity, but as you saw in the earlier chart, their stock is doing very, very well this year. And then you can see Wiz, Tanium, Sentinel One, some of the companies that, a couple of the companies that George Kurtz called, calls out on the earnings call, Tanium is an endpoint player. Now notice the insert within the ETR data set, the CrowdStrike overlap in Microsoft accounts. So in other words, we're not showing it here, but if you flipped it, in other words, if you, if you ran a, a cross tab on, I don't know, over a thousand uh, uh, Microsoft accounts in the ETR data set, 25% would also have CrowdStrike. Now you might say, wow, that's a lot lower than the overlap on the reverse, 79% Microsoft overlap. But 25% is pretty significant. 25% of the accounts, if Microsoft accounts also have CrowdStrike. So that kind of uh, uh, solidifies or, or aligns with what George Kurtz was saying. Now the second bullet here, CrowdStrike, the CrowdStrike overlap in Dell accounts is 28%. And the Dell overlap in CrowdStrike accounts is around 38%. So in other words, in these 422 accounts, Dell, there are 30, 38% of them have Dell. And then you flip that uh, of, of CrowdStrike within Dell accounts is 28%. Why do, we, why do we call that out? The reason we call that out is because there's some softness, and I didn't call this out in the earlier slide. Um, uh, I, I actually did call it out, sorry. About the softness in the SMB market. Now, a couple of quarters ago, CrowdStrike, CrowdStrike specifically said that its SMB business was soft, uh, and that was a reason why it, you know, its earnings, yeah, it was an earnings miss, but it was basically a, a miss, or it was perceived as a miss. It was, a, or not a beat, you know, which people expect. Anyway, it was that SMB softness. They subsequently, and I think it might've been a Dell Tech World, announced a deal between Dell and CrowdStrike, where Dell will be, uh, will be selling uh, CrowdStrike's uh, solutions. Dell obviously has been talking up cybersecurity, you know, as of late. And so this is interesting to us because it's a real opportunity for CrowdStrike and Dell to shore up that SMB business, especially in the context of the softness that we perceive in the current quarter coming up. Uh, we'll see, again, the, the surveys in the field, but the initial indications are there is some softness. And so that's something that we'll be watching. Dell will be at, they are a diamond sponsor, I think it is, diamond or platinum. I think diamonds above platinum. <laughs> What's more valuable, diamonds or platinum? I guess, I guess diamonds. Maybe not, platinum's more scarce. But anyway, Dell is one of the top, uh, top sponsors. So let's end, <laughs> and I'll clarify it here, talking about the Falcon preview, if we could bring up the next slide here. Uh, it's a two-day event at Caesars Palace. The Cube is going to be there, so if you're going to be there, stop by. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got to update this slide, Falcon 2022. We were there last year as well. I'll update it with the 2023 logo. My apologies. It's been a crazy day. A lot of red eyes this week. Um, second key point here, we're going to have keynotes from George Kurtz, Intel, uh, the, the, the CISO of Intel, the CISO of, of Mattel, or maybe you say CISO. Security practitioners say CISO, I say CISO. Anyway, two top security pros from Intel and Mattel. We're going to have practitioners from Liberty Mutual and Salesforce and it's action packed. They're going to have a much, a much bigger Falcon this year. Um, obviously what we just talked about, big focus on Charlotte AI and pricing. I'm really interested to see how CrowdStrike prices Charlotte because they have to be careful, right? I mean, I think they could do value-based pricing and trying to make a case of, hey, look how much time we're saving you, look how much money we're saving you in terms of staffing. But again, it can't be so expensive that it's prohibitive to people adopting. 
So they're going to have to balance this, and I'm sure they will with their margin model. And, um, and, and I think they could have some pretty attractive pricing here, and it'll be integrated into the to Falcon platform that is, I think, going to be very uh, intriguing for customers. Um, the fourth bullet here, expanding the Falcon uh, platform, or the Falcon platform. Uh, we're going to hear a lot, I think, about cloud, uh, security in the cloud, in other words, uh, Falcon in the cloud itself. CrowdStrike was early there, as we said. They also uh, protect identity, as sort of treat it as an endpoint, and then log scale, going after all that sort of munge of logs is another growing business for them. One of the things George Kurtz said, uh, which was quite interesting, was each of these businesses is IPO-able in and of itself. Um, and so put that together and you've got a pretty hot company right now. The other thing is last year at Falcon 2022, we said one of the things we want to see from, from, from CrowdStrike is ecosystem expansion. And we're starting to see that. AWS, they were there last year, but other partners, we talked about Dell, Intel, Cloudflare, Mandiant, Zscaler, 70, even 70 plus partners at the event is a nice expansion and we expect you know, significant uh, momentum from that ecosystem. If you're going to be a platform play, you got to have ecosystems. The hallmark of a cloud company is ecosystem uh, energy and flywheel, so we'll be looking for that. The, the uh, event is at Caesars, and the, we, were, we were discussing in the Cube Pod uh, earlier today, because we were at the uh, SAS conference last week, which is, was at MGM at the Aria across the street from the MGM, it's an MGM property. The MGM got hacked, and so did Caesars. Word is Caesars paid the ransom but we still don't have hotel rooms. We can't confirm our hotel. And the, uh, the, we're staying at the Bellagio. We can't, we can't figure out, you know, in fact, if we have a reservation. So really interesting and scary and timely, these hacks. So I'm sure that will be a topic of conversation uh, at Falcon. It certainly was uh, to a lesser extent last week at the SAS conference, but that's something that we'll be paying attention to, trying to unpack the anatomy of that hack, I'm sure it was some kind of phishing thing. It seems to always be that way. But um, anyway, if you're at the conference uh, next week, this coming week, stop by, we're at theCUBE. Two days of coverage, myself and Lisa Martin. John Furrier will be at Mandiant, a simultaneous event, another security event in DC. Whole CUBE team will be there, so definitely stop by and see him and the CUBE team if you're at Mandiant in DC. Okay, we're going to leave it there for now. Thank you. Very much to Alex Meyerson, he's on production and manages the podcast. Ken Schiffman as well. Kristen Martin and Cheryl Knight help get the word out on social media and in our newsletters. And Rob Hof is our editor in chief over at siliconangle.com. Thank you for all the great editing that you do. Remember all these episodes are available as podcasts wherever you listen. Just search Breaking Analysis Podcast. I publish each week on wikibon.com and siliconangle.com or you can email me at david.vellante at siliconangle.com. I get tons of, of inbounds, don't, don't, don't be offended if I don't respond. Uh, if, if you have something interesting and I catch it, I'll respond. If not, you know, keep trying. You can DM me as well at dvellante on Twitter or X now, or comment on my LinkedIn posts. And please do check out etr.ai. Awesome survey data, they're expanding their survey data. They just, they just launched another emerging technology survey to complement their technology spending intention survey, incredible company and work that they're doing they're based in New York. Best data in the enterprise tech business, in my opinion. Okay, this is Dave Vellante for theCUBE Insights powered by ETR. Thanks for watching everybody, and we'll see you next time on Breaking Analysis.